Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, this is going to be a special edition of the show uh, where we will be interviewing uh, a Cal Exeter. Uh, but uh, before that, let me introduce you to our panel. Uh, up in the upper right-hand corner of our screen, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in the lower right-hand corner, we have uh, Leon the Word Brathwaite. Uh, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer from the state of California. And now I'll introduce you to uh, our guest panelist today, our Cal Exeter. Uh, her name is Leslie, and she is uh, a California resident who is uh, moving out of California. And we'll find out a little bit more about that uh, throughout the course of the show. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. <laughs> so uh, recently in the news, we've heard a lot about people leaving some of uh, some of the uh, blue state utopias. And one of those is uh, California, where, you know, there's been a lot of news about, you know, U-Haul trucks essentially mainly headed in one direction, which is out. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, we, you know, we're trying to interview people to try and understand some of the reasons behind that and, uh, you know, just sort of get a flavor of, of what some of these reasons are and maybe what we could do better in California to, to reverse some of that trend. Um, so I'd like to introduce you now to our uh, guest, Leslie. She's in the left-hand corner. And uh, Leslie, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and roughly what part of California you're from? Um, I'm 59. I'm in my last year of my 50s. My, and I'm a mother of three children. I live in Rescue, California, which is about an hour west of South Lake Tahoe in fire country. Okay. <clears throat> Um, well, uh, I, I guess, uh, have you been, um, uh, yeah, how, how long have you been in that area, roughly? I've been in Sacramento County pretty much most of my life, with the exception of the last two years in El Dorado County, and I spent a couple of years in Solano County. Uh, El Dorado County is a very expensive county to live in with insurance and water and, and electricity, everything. It's, and it's also fire country, which is very scary. Okay. So we're leaving. We're actually moving back to Solano County until our house is built. Okay, and and uh, where roughly? Uh, so you're going to be moving uh, to uh, Nevada uh, near Lake Tahoe, or is no, it Northern oh. Idaho? Oh, Northern <laughs> Idaho. Okay, okay. It's about fifteen to twenty minutes from Coeur d'Alene. Okay. okay, we just bought a piece of property there. Okay, well, uh, did uh, did did you want to go into some of the uh, some of the reasons uh, for the move? Maybe uh, what what kind of things are prompting the move? Um, well, California isn't like it used to be. Um, it's dry. We don't have four seasons anymore. It's crowded, homelessness. Uh, we have um, electricity problems where they'll cut us off and not even tell us so we can go days without electricity, food spoils. We lose money that way. Uh, the cost of electricity is crazy. Um, we paid $620 for a month last, last month um, for our electric bill and 360 for our water bill. So that's almost $1,000 just to live in this county for our utilities. Mm -hmm. um, the homelessness is crazy. The pollution in our water systems due to the homelessness being close to the water, especially Sacramento River is polluted. They don't even advise you to swim in it. Um, mm -hmm. The oceans are polluted down south, especially like by Pacific Beach. You know, you could go down early in the morning when the tide's out and nothing but bottle caps are out on the beach. Uh, it's just, the, the, the city is just, the state is just going downhill um, politically as well as financially. So you want to know the reasons why we're moving to Idaho? <laughs> the positives? <laughs> the positive thing about Idaho is it does have the four seasons. It's green. It's like Tahoe on steroids. It has um, all kinds of water. There's lakes in every corner. We purchased a lakefront property with a boat dock in Lake Hayden and um the fire insurance is not anywhere near as expensive as here. Um, their water, the cost of living altogether is 33% lower. Um, wow. Gas is like maybe a dollar seventy-five to two dollars a gallon. Electricity is 33% lower. The cost of the, the housing prices are lower, which are increasing due to the exits and um, people moving there. But we would never have dreamed of living on a lakefront property here in California. We wouldn't be able to afford it. So, 
So, Leslie, yeah. have you spent some time there already, or has is this something that's just going to be off in the future, or have you already got the property and spent some time there? Um, it's funny. I've never been to northern northern part of the United States at all. So this was a first time visit to Idaho. Um, we were looking. We we're going to look at Utah, Arizona. We were looking at Tennessee, Texas, and Idaho. Idaho happened to be our first stop, and I fell completely in love with it because it has everything I love. I'm an outdoors person. I love to kayak and paddleboard and jet ski, hike, snow ski, um, cross country ski, snowmobiling, all that. And it has everything that California has with milder temperatures, greener um, scenery. Uh, there is snow, which we don't get here in rescue. We do get a dusting of it, but it's about three feet a year, which isn't too bad in Hayden. Um, but everything's green and we have a ski resort an hour, the largest Idaho ski resorts an hour from our property. Uh, we have lakefront. I mean, what more could you ask for? It's got everything. It's also a red state, which we're kind of tired of this blue state. Wow. Yeah. When you say, Leslie, when you say that the state is going uh, downhill, which you know, I may tend to agree, but in, in what sense do you mean that? I mean, if, could you just elaborate on that a little bit? I've been here my whole life, and um, I never dreamed I would ever want to leave California. You, 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 were, born it, you, were, born, you were born in born California. Right here. Um, okay. And I saw the climate changing about 1986 when I went outside on Christmas Day to move something in the house and did not need a coat. It was the first time ever that we've gone out without needing a coat in December since I was a child. And it's gotten hotter and hotter and drier and drier. Um, taxes are, are out of those. It's crazy. Our taxes, we pay like 40% of our income on taxes. Um, we have homelessness is, is gone way up. Pollution. Uh, the fire insurance. Insurance is crazy. People are getting dropped left and right in our county. Um, and people can't even get insurance, which is scary, especially when you live in a fire country. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, um, it's gone downhill. I, I can't explain it. It's not like it used to be. I mean, trying to get from A to Z takes forever because of the traffic. They're building yeah. left and right. In our county, they have like seven new developments going in. So we find dead deer on the road all the time. We are in deer country and the wildlife, we, we're finding mountain lions in our um, neighborhoods. Um, the the wildlife has no place to go. They're, they're, they're also, also suffering and it's just not like it used to be. It's not fun. And the wildfires destroy our summer for the last four to five years. Right. I see. I see. Wow. Well, so, you know, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, you go ahead, Tim. Yeah. I, I was going to ask Leslie. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I've heard read that Idaho is the most popular uh, state for people moving into of, of the 50 states. Um, so she's not alone in moving there. And I was going to just ask, just to re, just to clarify, um, when she says that taxes are 40% of, of your income, um, what does that constitute approximately? I mean, as far as uh, state, is it, is it the state and federal? Uh, yeah, state, local, property taxes, property tax, all that. It all, all equals about 40%. When you when you gotcha. put it all together, you know, how much money do you take off your dollar? You probably take home about 60 cents a dollar. Yeah. Um, okay. By the time you're taxed at the grocery store, you're taxed at the, 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 the gas pump, the taxes gotcha. on your houses, the taxes on everything you touch is taxed. Yeah. Your social yeah. security. <laughs> Um, you know, your retirement, it's, it's everything. And some states don't tax your retirement like Tennessee. Unfortunately, yeah. Idaho does, but at a lower rate on Got, state uh, tax, gotcha. state taxes lower. So that would be the, the, the just, just picking on uh, the subject of taxes. Uh, so what, what do you think you'll be saving moving to Idaho as a percentage compared to mm. the 40%? Well, they say it's 33% cheaper to live there. So that's, don't know. I mean, yeah, they, okay. for instance, if you made an income of $240,000 here, you'd only have to make an income of 156,000 there gotcha. to, to live the or, same lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Equal lifestyle. So, so yeah, that, that's a significant amount. Mm -hmm. yeah, the only thing is, is yeah, yeah, the yeah. negative thing is that there's no jobs like there are here, but it's great for people that are retired and don't have to go get a job to live. Yeah. And if you sell your house here, you can take your cash there and get so much more. 
Right, How about right. pilots? Can a pilot work over there? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you can be stationed anywhere. You know, it's a little so. bit harder um, for yeah. people that have like IT jobs. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to oh, find yeah. a lot of that in northern Idaho. Um, well, they can do it. They can do it remotely now. They, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what my fiance does. He does it remotely. He did, I have, okay, I, he's in IT. I, okay, cool. Yeah, well, he's I not in IT. Son, he, my, my son, my son work, works at home, but um, his job is early. Um, his employer is in San Francisco, and he so he's like, like two hours away physically from his from his job site, but he he does all his work from home. Yeah, so that's I, my fiance is the same. Yeah. <laughs> San Francisco. Yeah. Huh. If, you, if you can find, if you can um. If you have the internet, as long as you have a good um, a good hookup to the internet, you could probably work with an IT. You could probably work almost anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. with, yeah, we're with, hoping that he'll work for the next five years from Idaho in in Idaho and have his companies here. So we'll even have more money than if we were to live there. But we're he's retiring in five years. I'm already retired. Oh, I see. What okay. What did you do? Uh, if you don't mind uh, talking about your previous job, uh, the the career that you had. The last job that I had, I worked at a dental manufacturing facility as their quality assurance manager, uh, materials manager, and FDA regulatory affairs manager for 12 years. Wow. Okay. I, I didn't actually uh, know what you did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were uh, in, uh, involved in a big group of people that were uh, basically um, getting together to socialize, and, uh, you know, you would you know, not know a lot about everyone, but uh, you, mm -hmm. you know something about everyone. So there you have it. Ah, cool. I've been retired for a while. So people think that I've never worked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you worked in private, the, the private sector, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The, the Dell manufacturing company was owned privately and I left when they bought it out. I was part owner. I had paper in the company. And so gotcha. When they got bought out by a, a larger Dell manufacturing um, company back in St. Louis, I decided to leave. No, uh, I could have stayed, I but I just I didn't want to move to St. Louis, so oh. I decided to walk away. <laughs> I'll be darned. Okay. Huh. So, so it sounds like uh, your prior employer then was also leaving California as well. <laughs> I don't know where he I haven't oh, talked to him in, in 15 years or more. Oh, okay. I, I have no idea. I think he went on to open up another company, but. Um, okay. At the time, I had just gotten pregnant with my youngest and decided to move on. And I haven't looked back. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I've been having fun. She'll, she'll, <laughs> probably, she'll probably run into him at the supermarket in Idaho. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Job. My husband moved to Idaho and my ah. fiance moved to Idaho. <laughs> it's a small world. But I'm on this site called Leaving California for Idaho. And I'm telling you, there's so many people every day that, that leave California and they're like posting pictures of their new house in Idaho. Approximately oh, wow. on the average 10 people a day. Wow. So Idaho, so Idaho is a is a popular destination for for people leaving California. Yeah, the southern part of Idaho, down by Boise, Meridian, um, Nampa, they have um, nice housing developments down there for younger folks, and it's closer to a, a major city for them to continue their employment. Right. Up in the northern part is mostly retired people. We okay. live in a very huge retirement community called Hayden. There's like three golf courses in that community. The lake is, we're 15 minutes from Coeur d'Alene, but when people go to vacation there, they don't go to Hayden, they go to Coeur d'Alene. That's why we bought in Hayden to keep away from all the tourists. All right, all right, all right. Already, already I was trying to snub those uh, Californians <laughs> coming up there. Oh, <laughs> you know, I hear the people in Idaho don't really like the Californians because they think we're all Democrats. And um, they don't, they're a conservative state. So they want us to keep our beliefs and things here. And they say, change your license place before you actually enter Idaho and you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we might borrow somebody's license plate to say Nevada or something on it just until we get our own. <laughs> it's getting flooded with Californians and they're getting a little bit upset about it. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. They don't mind if you don't bring your California ways with you, but they don't want our policies and our mentality and that kind of thing. Well, I'm, talking, talking, talking. I'm, I'm sorry, Tim. I'm sorry. 
I, I was just going to say that kind of thing uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me because I think you it's the type of people that leave uh, that would exactly. be um, more of a conservative bent to the to exactly the, you know that's what we're hoping you know yeah. we met our neighbor our neighbors from Southern California <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah yeah you know okay. that that you know Tim what you just said makes sense you know and you know about people leaving and the people who live in California will tend to be more conservative mm -hmm. and I totally agree because mm -hmm. you know I'm 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 one of them people who would have liked to leave, but I can't for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, about three or four years ago, the Wall Street Journal had an article about about I don't know what state it was, but it was about people who leaving leaving a uh, leaving um California and going to this state. It might have been Utah or some or some or one of those states. But the people, the people who are living in Utah and seeing these new group of people moving in. They were really upset because this, they, they felt like some of the California values was coming to the state. It might have been Utah, I'm not sure. But there was some there was some issue about that about must have been three years ago in the Wall Street Journal, which was kind of surprising given the fact that you know people like you know more conservative people tend will tend to be the people most likely to leave the state. But you know, um, that was just an issue there that 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 was kind of puzzling to me. It is different there. I mean, they don't have backyard fences where we live, so you don't have that California privacy. You know how we all have our own little space. Nobody goes yes. in your space. And, you know, you, you hear stories from people that are from California that don't really like that, not having yes. their space. Someone's on the cur you know, the center or driving on their, or parking on their grass or, you know, to them, it's yeah. no big deal. I was like, wait a minute, that's my piece of grass. <laughs> so you, just kind of, you have to kind of change your mentality a little bit. Um, and just, I hear it, they're very friendly though. And a lot right. of the different things. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people, I'm on another site called uh, Leaving California. And it's interesting to see all the different places people move to and what they get for their money. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, Leslie, one of the things that uh, has kind of popped up recently, and, and since you were mentioning the taxes, uh, and, and maybe that being one of the reasons to leave, but California is recently, pro it sounds like they're gonna propose uh, a wealth tax on people who are, aren't even here, you know, is that something that concerns you if you're heading out the door at? <laughs> um, the wealth tax on California or on the United States? Well, I think it's on people it's, who it's, earn their money here in California. It's one of those things that's been- I heard uh, that they're the trying to make an exit tax. Yeah, you know, I like the people, exit tax. I keep against our constitution. I don't think they're gonna be successful at that. I know that they started targeting corporations first, um, but I think we'll be out of here before that happens. We're going to be out of here. Our, our property just closed escrow on Monday. So we are moving back to my old rental, um, leaving this house, you know, Elrota County to get away from here. And I live in a, a retired golf course community. I have a rental out there in uh, Rio Vista. You ever heard of Rio Vista? Yes. I have. And we're going to move back there and get the house ready to sell. But in the meantime, we have to start our house, which we have to go with the designer. We have to do, you know, find a builder. It'll take about two years, unfortunately. Oh, I see. Before we actually leave. Uh, okay. okay. Huh. Uh, there was a question, wasn't there, Jason? I saw a question from somebody come across the screen. Yeah. Ah. Well, yeah. 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 Go ahead, Tim. It, it's well. I don't know if you guys see it. Uh, came yes. From Libertarian Express. So, uh, what is oh. the most difficult part of deciding to leave? Uh, well, I think it's because I've been here my whole life. My family's here. Um, I, I have three children that live in California right now, pretty much in driving distance. But my oldest is going to Ireland. My youngest is going, um, she's in Stanford for six years, so she's stuck there. My middle child is moving up north. My brother's going to Italy. So the last person standing is my mother. And she's not doing really well right now. But um, if she's still here in two years, I'm probably going to take her with me. That's the hardest part is just leaving your family and friends. But most of my friends have already left me, so <laughs> there's not a whole lot left. <laughs> yeah. But as far as everything else, I don't think it'll be difficult at all because Idaho does resemble California in so many ways. It's the only thing it doesn't have is an ocean. Yeah. yeah right, so, right, right. And it's clean as a whistle. I mean, literally, you can walk down the street. You have the lake. You have the lake. Oh, it, we have a lot of lakes. Yes, we have a yes. lot of lakes. We have probably just four or five within... 15, 20 minutes of us. Wow. So um, there's Sandpoint and you can take a ferry to Canada. Uh, there's, you know, Wyoming and Montana is not too far away to go to the state parks. 
it's it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a really good time. And if it gets too cold in the winter for us, we'll just go to Puerto Vallarta for a month. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Plus, uh, I don't think you'd have trouble having people come come up to visit when you have a house on the lake like that. I don't think so. No, it's not the easiest place to access because you have to come into Spokane, which is not cheap. Like you know, Southwest, you can get tickets into Seattle and San Diego and places for forty nine, sixty nine, seventy nine dollars. But Spokane's a little more expensive. So, um, I think my friends will come up and visit, but we're also going to be visiting them because we have friends now in Utah, Arizona, Tennessee, and Texas. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our <laughs> last, our, our last uh, Cal Exeter was uh, Susie going to Tennessee. Yes. And she's yeah. there. Oh, is she in yeah. Tennessee? That's where my mom is from. I've visited wow. Tennessee. Um, they they have some great tax um, cuts there. I mean, they don't charge in, you anything for your um, your Income. retirement. Oh. Um, but the thing is the weather. Um, being up here, it's been extremely hot and being older, I don't like the heat that much. I didn't want to go to the desert. I didn't want to go to humidity. Uh, again, Idaho has uh, the weather like California, except it's milder. So in the summer, it might get up to 85 to 90. You have early mm -hmm fall seasons, winters, but um, they do have full four seasons there. Yeah, you mostly, mentioned, oh, 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 sorry, I, we're, we're kind of getting near the end and there's one question I wanted to put to you before we get to the end. And okay. it's, uh, it's if, if California was going to make a pitch to keep you and your family here, what would it have to do? That's, I mean, what, what could change in California to get people to stay or want to come here in your opinion? We'd have to change the climate, which is not something I think they have control over because it's super dry and hot. Um, get better control on the electricity and water. We have, we we're running out of water and electricity. They keep building. They'd have to lower the traffic problems, which I don't, I think that's out of their control as well. Cause there's so many people here, taxes, uh, just the cost of living here. Yeah. I don't know if they can change. I don't think they could do it in my lifetime. Well, I think one of the big things that they could do uh, that they have control over is that the humongous amount of regulations they have in this state is unbelievable. And I think that is yeah. some place, that is one place that the legislature and the governor have control over, and they are doing nothing about that. And, and they seeing people like you leaving, businesses are leaving, and they still do nothing about it. As a matter of fact, they're doing the very opposite, passing more regulation to make people want to leave the state. I agree. They, you kind of feel like a prisoner here. <laughs> There's yeah. there are there are a lot of regulations and rules, and um, it's getting worse. Okay. Yeah, it's it's number one in in the fifty states uh, for regulations. Number two is New York, and it exceeds New York's regulations by I can't remember what the percentage was, but it's significant. So there's there is that many more regulations here in California. Well, and that's yeah. been highlighted too by how easily in this COVID era that uh, you know some of these blue states have have had a time in locking people down essentially and and enforcing mm -hmm. new restrictions on people yeah. i'll tell you when i was in idaho during the the midst of covid um the waiters were masked and the people behind the counters were masked but it felt pretty normal other than that i mean we ate at mm -hmm. restaurants we went to concerts we everybody was living life as usual you could go to a beach with 25 parking slots at two o'clock in the afternoon and still find parking you know here you, it's a difficult thing to find parking even if you go hiking you have to leave really early in the morning. You can't find parking. So it's, there's so much stuff here that I got to get away from. <laughs> I just want to play, have a good time. <laughs> 20 more years, all I got, right? <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully more than that. Hopefully more than yeah, that. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Well, that sounds like the time for our knucklehead noise patrol. We're near the end of the show, and we had to find, uh, we like to end with something that's uh, uh, kind of odd that somebody out in the uh, press, usually a politician, has said. It uh, kind of uh, makes you scratch your head. And so uh, this one is is uh, kind of climate change related, and it has to do with, uh, you know, the characterization, I guess, of the issue. And I recently uh, Nancy Pelosi was uh, uh, on the air talking about the uh, California wildfires, and she said, Mother Earth is angry, um, she said, and she's she's telling us with hurricanes in the Gulf, uh, fires in the West, 
whatever it is, the climate crisis is real and has an impact. But I just thought, you know, it's funny because, you know, they like to characterize themselves as the party of science and Mother Earth is angry. But anyways, didn't know what you guys had to think about that one. Now, <laughs> let's, let's let the lady go first. <laughs> oh, gosh, don't get me started on Nancy. Um, <laughs> my daughter's studying climate change, and it is real. That's her major at Stanford is climate change and bacteria and things like that. It is real. Um, there are some things we can do to make it better, but it's not something that happened in the last four years. Uh, this has been going on for centuries, and it's been going on for lifetime. I mean, the climate always changes. Uh, yeah. The thing with the fracking kind of cracks me up, right? I mean, Stanford did a study on fracking and said that it doesn't disturb the climate. It's very safe as long as it's done right. So Nancy and Biden, how Biden's going to change all the weather when he becomes president? I mean, those guys are crazy. <laughs> well, and then change the wet weather with uh, building fast trains that kind of, you know. <laughs> no, promises, no more hurricanes, no more tornadoes. I mean, who's going to be God, I guess? I don't, I don't know. You see, Nancy, yeah. Nancy and Biden have the same problem. They're losing their cognitive abilities. You know, <laughs> Biden can't finish a sentence, and Nancy is now talking to spirits of the earth, Mother Earth. And she, Mother Earth is speaking to her and telling her all of these things. That's why she comes up with all these crazy ideas that she thinks the rest of us should go along with. These people are insane. That's what it is. Climate change is an ongoing thing. It's been going on, just like Leslie said, for centuries. The Earth has been cooler. The Earth has been hotter. What have happened? Going to Bible, you see climate change, the Great Flood. What do you think that was? Oh, come on. Oh, oh, they're going to fix this thing. Please, give me a break. Well, uh, I mean, no, come on, Leon. Uh, uh, don't you know that Mother Earth is mad that there's a Republican in the White House? And, and if they, <laughs> sorry, if we sorry Tim, that, I forgot that. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Yeah, I mean, geez, geez, let's get with the program here. And when we put a Democrat in the White House, Mother Earth will be relieved to hear that and will, yes. will you know, settle down a little bit now. Just settle the down. The spaceships now. will take the message up to her, right? Of course, of course. Yes. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> well, you know, we're getting near the end of the show. Thanks so much, Leslie, for joining us today. Hey, for I think me. We've had a, yeah, we've had a great time having you on, and I think it has helped inform a lot of people about, you know, maybe what's going on with, uh, you know, some of the reasons why people are leaving. And if you're a viewer and you've been listening, uh, you can send, uh, if, if you have a story about leaving California as well, uh, we'd love to hear about it. You can send that uh, comment into. Uh, I believe it's Counterpoint uh, Libertarian. It should be scrolling across the bottom of the screen at some point in the episode, so you can go back and uh, look at that. But uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you, and maybe we could have you on a guest as, as a guest as well. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us, and thanks again, Leslie. You're welcome. Leslie, thank, thank you. you. Leslie, it was nice meeting you, and thanks, thanks for joining us. Nice to meet us. you, too. <laughs> Bye-bye.